Hi, this is Dr. Robert Izor. I'm a neurologist at Neurology Solutions Movement Disorder Center. We're a comprehensive treatment center specializing in Parkinson's disease, tremor, and dystonia, located in Austin, Texas. This presentation is part of a series of videos designed to educate and promote longer and better quality of life, not just for our patients, but for the community we serve. Please contact us at 512-977-7000 if you would like a consultation. So the first topic that I would like to present today uh, is mainly involves nutrition and more importantly the timing of nutrition to enhance a metabolic process called autophagy among other things. So just as recently as 2016, the Nobel Prize was won by a Japanese researcher for his work in autophagy. His name is Yoshinori Osumi, uh, and, and he started his research in the 1990s uh, and, and is just now getting some credit. But that helps us to realize that a lot of this research has just been done in recent decades. Autophagy is a critical metabolic process of what we call self-eating. So during starvation, cells break down proteins and non-essential components and reuse them for energy. Cells also use autophagy to get rid of damaged structures. The process is often defective in cancer, infectious diseases, immunological diseases, and neurodegenerative disorders, and aging in general. So self-eating is executed inside cells by vesicular structures called lysosomes, literally the Pac-Man of the cell. Lysosomes are filled with degrading enzymes which destroy structures and recycle them to be used for energy or constructing new healthy structures. Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease have been shown to have defect in, defects in this autophagy system. Normalizing these systems could theoretically help damaged cells clear out abnormal or toxic accumulated proteins. Autophagy is shut down dramatically after eating, so you don't want to eat if you're trying to activate and optimize these systems. Glucose, insulin, and amino acids turn off autophagy, even very small amounts. Growth hormone and other anabolic steroid hormones diminish gradually with age, also contributing to loss of healthy tissue function. As an added bonus, fasting also increases growth hormone release, which stimulates differentiation and more youthful and healthy tissue function. There are multiple forms of fasting, such as fasting for many days in a row, uh, such as some people do with Ramadan in Islamic culture. Um, there are also some people doing uh, what I think are radical diets like the lemonade diet which they're basically using very low calorie diets for many days in a row. There are other forms of intermittent fasting where people will eat uh, you know, normally for uh, five days in a row and then two days they'll s substantially restrict calories in their diet for two days. Um, but there's also a simpler form of fasting uh, called time-restricted feeding, where you basically fast every day during your non-active hours. And so what the MEND protocol recommends, uh, which is very reasonable, is a 12-hour fast during the non-active part of the day. And this has been done in animal studies and shows very, uh, very nice improvement in multiple metabolic parameters. Uh, and we know this in increases autophagy and other systems that are important uh, for restoring your health and, and tissue function, uh, typically during your sleep. So uh, also growth hormones greatest release is also at night, so it makes good sense not to eat for several hours before bedtime. Animal studies show the greatest metabolic enhancement is directly proportional to the length of fasting during this inactive phase of the day. So lengthening the fasting period before and during sleep may simply allow the body to more efficiently eliminate toxins and damaged structures while triggering rebuilding and rejuvenation of tissues. Most studies in autophagy and, and enhancing metabolic function related to time release feedings have been conducted in the last few years. The lifestyle is well tolerated and patients are more compliant than other forms of fasting. And these studies show that weight loss without intentional calorie restriction during the feeding phase, essentially eat what you want, leads to multiple improvements in many areas. This includes increased muscle and lean body mass and exercise studies, um, weight loss, uh, improved insulin resistance, reduced markers of inflammation like interleukin-6, tumor necrosis factor, um, reduced cancer risk, reduced cardiovascular and stroke risk, improved disability in a case series of Alzheimer's patients, also performing other interventions in the MEND protocol, which we plan to go through in subsequent videos. 
So we here at Neurology Solutions Movement Disorder Center primarily treat Parkinson's disease and similar neurodegenerative disorders. It is our opinion that the techniques outlined in the MEND protocol represent a worthwhile treatment strategy for patients diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, but also as a healthy and preventative lifestyle for everyone. This presentation is offered by Neurology Solutions Movement Disorder Center. It's part of a series of videos designed to educate and promote, promote longer and better quality of life, not just for our patients, but for the community we serve. We hope you enjoyed this content. Please contact us at 512-977-7000 if you would like a consultation for yourself or a family member. Thank you for your time.